Well, ladies and gentlemen, when that video was made, Peter Lougheed had been out of politics for 15 years, and yet you could see how fresh the memories of him were in everyone's thoughts, and I don't think another, adding another nine years has changed one bit. I'm sorry that Nancy Southern can't be with us here tonight, but I thought she captured the essence of Peter Lougheed very well. He's a man of the people, but he's a leader. I think it's very clear he always was and is to this day. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Lahey. Thank you. Thank you. That was close to overwhelming. And uh, I just appreciate it so much. Uh, just uh, seeing and observing that and seeing the comments that were made uh, uh, really touched me in a, in a very significant way. Overwhelming, uh, it's, it's, I think you would sense. Uh, David Brown, thank you for being part of this tonight. Um, the video I've written down here, and I wasn't sure, but I think the word is right. It's humbling, really, to see that and to see the people, and it's particularly when the people make those uh, comments. Let me say to you as well that uh, I am indeed deeply honored uh, that this is called the Peter Lougheed Awards for Leadership in Public Policy, as you would expect they would be, deeply honored by it. And uh, I, I'm honored, as I will make a comment in a minute, about uh, the, the recipients tonight. Uh, I welcome each of you uh, here to this uh, special occasion. Uh, I was just uh, delighted when I asked my usual question uh, to David, I said, uh, how's the turnout look? <laughs> when you live uh, through what I lived through and starting with a party with no seats, uh, it was in this very location uh, where we used to have, we had our very first uh, annual meeting of our party, a party that started with no seats. I was standing right here and I was concerned about the turnout. <laughs> and uh, was watching that. In fact, I've got to say, and I think I've got time to do it, an amusing incident. Uh, I have this uh, thing with notes, and careful, Peter, and this uh, place where I put my notes, and I've done this for many years, and I came up here and reached below, and they weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Jennings knows this story, and David King is standing right over there, who worked with me, became later an excellent minister of education, and David standing in expectation, waiting for my remarks, holding my notes in his hand. <laughs> it was <laughs> quite a, so this room and this place is uh, quite a lot of uh, thoughts in my mind. I sense as I look around uh, a tremendous uh, turnout of the leadership of this city in so many uh, varied ways as the city itself is, my home city. And I'm very pleased for you and your attendance here as well. The organization uh, by you, David, and your team has been just uh, spectacular and very great. I want to uh, say a word about the recipients. It's quite unusual under these circumstances, but I think it's valid this way because I'm fortunate to know all four of them personally. And they're truly outstanding, as you will get the feeling as the night uh, progresses. They're very different, uh, but their focus and their contributions have been something very special uh, uh, to our city, our province, and our country. Um, let me just say a word about each one of them. Roger Gibbons and I uh, worked together in the very beginning with Canada West, and, uh, and Jim Gray and all the start of that, Roger, was great. But what the people in this room don't know is that uh, when I left government, I was uh, talked into uh, becoming are you ready for this? A university lecturer. <laughs> and I presented, started with a course, and this is not a bad uh, description, but you might get a feel for it. In fact, somebody just spoke to me tonight that they were there. The class was uh, made up of a focus, uh, it was only half a year, of how governments make decisions. <laughs> and uh, I had a lot of fun. I did that for about six years uh, with Roger, and uh, we became, uh, lifelong friends because of that, and he's just done a credible job uh, with Canada West. 
Now, Ron Hicks is here as well, and although I don't know him as well personally as, the, as some of the others, I, I know him by reputation, but what I do know, and I mentioned this to him, I know his job, <laughs> because I know the job of what he does and has done as the Deputy Minister of the Executive Council for a number of important years. Uh, because the, uh, the Deputy Minister of Executive Council in the province of Alberta uh, is really a key in terms of government, and I, and I know as well uh, how much uh, Ron Hicks, and you'll be hearing more about that in a few minutes, has, has produced and been involved with it. Now, to see this list when I first got hit with it, and there was Martha Piper. I'm very proud of her accomplishments in post-secondary education, Martha. It's, uh, uh, you're, you were just involved in one of my personal priorities, and to be here tonight and to be able to acknowledge you and to be part of this evening uh, as a dear friend is very special as well. And Clay Riddell, he represents really the very essence of the business community, not just in Calgary, but in the, in the West. He so em embodies what uh, we really think is significant in the way we are in the West. That is a successful business, but somebody that really truly contributes, sometimes uh, with profile and sometimes without profile, to so many elements in the community as well. So just to be involved in this evening and to have these people with me uh, is very special as well. Let me say a word about the Public Policy Forum. I've uh, been very impressed uh, with the work, David, you and your team are doing and your Canadian focal point, and you expressed it so well tonight about what you do and how you do it, and I think that was important for all of us. Uh, you've, you've really led this organization so well. Uh, the initiative, uh, to me, the Public Policy Forum, uh, and the, what they do is reflected very much in, in both you and your team here, uh, but what David Brown was saying as well. So it's a very incredible thing to put together the Public Policy Forum. I like the mix, and what I mean by the mix, and you got it by those introductions, of the public service element, and it shows up in the, in the board as well, the academic community across Canada, the business community, and to me, very significantly and essential, the not-for-profit segment of Canada as well. In my view, uh, it's a most needed entity uh, for you in a country as diverse as Canada, and the board reflects that as well. It uh, continues to grow in influence in the decision-making process that's involved. I, I just have to give one anecdotal uh, uh, comment because I, I, I wrote these notes and I thought to myself, no, I'm going to do it. It's going to take a minute, but I'll do it. And the issue is, uh, how as a leader uh, do, you, do you get your input? How as a leader in a decision-making process do you get the, your input? Well, and I don't mean to this to be disparaging, uh, but the reality that I found very quickly in government was that the association briefs, by the very nature and structure of them, got watered down. And uh, they didn't really give me, as a leader of government or my colleagues, the, uh, the punch that I wanted them to. Uh, so it, it was the watering down of it that uh, concerned me. So what I did, and I, I don't think this is public, but I just thought it'd be a good time to perhaps describe it. What I did is come up with an idea not the first year I was in government, maybe about year three or year four. We had government house uh, in Edmonton, and what uh, we would do, and something for you to think about or maybe even talk about at uh, the dinner, uh, we would uh, get together a group, which would be in a given situation, say it was in energy, we'd get together five or six uh, leaders in the energy community who would come and meet at government house in, in Alberta, in Edmonton. Now here's the thing that probably these days, anyway, it might be hard to grasp. Jim Ninning knows what I'm about to say. These were, this went on without, <coughs> with due respect to the media that are in attendance tonight. <laughs> this went on without any of them knowing it went on. <laughs> I'm sort of proud of that. <laughs> that we were able to pull that off over all those years. Maybe in today's world it would be harder to do, but we, uh, we did, and they, we had one rule. The individual, 
the Jim Gray or the, uh, or the others that were involved, Doc Seaman, uh, they were not there to speak for their company. They were there to speak for their own views and their own aspirations and their own uh, focus on the future. And that was extremely important. But it remained, and we did this for many years, it remained uh, completely quiet. We'd have uh, some of the deputy ministers and some of the ministers with us, so it was that kind of a table. I just thought this would be a time to be public about that after all these years. <laughs> I think it, it worked from my point of view. So let me conclude. I just want to conclude this way. Uh, two thoughts about tonight. Uh, the role of the public policy forum uh, continues uh, with regard to its evolution, and you've sensed it already in the 19th and just sense it later. It is really, in my judgment, a key and integral part of public policy discussion and decision making in Canada. It should not be underestimated and I, and I think the turnout tonight reflects your feeling about that and about it as an organization. And let me close by repeating again, uh, on behalf of all of you as you will again have an opportunity to, my congratulations to these four outstanding recipients of uh, tonight's awards. Thank you for having me.